Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's lovely to see you. If you're new here, my name is Anna, I'm a classical violinist and creative entrepreneur and welcome to my channel where I share all about my life and the things that I love. So if you missed my last video, which I don't think many of you would have because a lot of you tuned in, but basically Alex and I are moving to New Zealand in a few weeks. Um, if you want to know a bit more about the real reasons behind the move, then definitely check out that video. This video is a little bit more answering questions around like logistics and other things that I didn't cover in that video. So both videos are important. <laughs> but today I thought as well as answering your questions, I would also show you through my little makeup bag of all the things that I've got with me, I've had for the last two weeks and I'm gonna have with me for about the next six weeks or so until we're really settled in our new place. So before we get underway with the get ready with me and questions, I'll show you guys quickly through what I've taken with me. And then I'm just basically sitting down and putting this face on, very basic face, and answering your questions that you left me over on Instagram about our upcoming move. If you do wanna keep up to date a little bit more real time, then definitely make sure you're following me over on my Instagram. It's just at Anna and Lane, because that's where I'll be doing the most kind of up to date updates. I want to say firstly though thank you so much for the love and support that you guys have given towards me and Alex in our last video and over on Instagram. We've really felt the love and support coming from you guys and it's been so comforting and so nice so thank you very much. Just before we start as well I did want to mention that my website is back up and running. I had it down for a little bit, it was only meant to be a couple of weeks, I was working on it to change the look of it and you know change things around a wee bit. Uh, and then the whole sort of like deciding to move countries thing kind of happened and it just took a few extra weeks for me to kind of get my head around actually working on it. But it is back up now, which I'm very excited about. Uh, it's got a new domain, it's just www.arnaelainemorton.com. Nice and simple. And I hope you like the new look. Uh, there is a new blog post on there, my famous pumpkin soup that I dropped everywhere in my last video. That recipe is on there. It is so cozy and comforting, especially if you're going into autumn or fall over in the US or other parts of the Northern Hemisphere. Definitely check out that recipe. It is so yummy, so comforting and cozy, especially if you're in a lockdown. Highly recommend. Alrighty, so in terms of base products, I have my Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. Oop, this way. <laughs> Um, this has nearly finished as you can see. I think I might have like one more use in it We'll try and get that out of it today um, But I did decant quite a lot of it into my little mini travel size So this will be what I take with me once we're underway. So that's the only real primer that I'm taking with me um, That is an eyeshadow <laughs> Those are concealers. I am not doing this very well. And then for foundations. I've got three with me So this is probably my favorite one at the moment the hydroluminous moisturizing foundation from number seven but this has only got about I'd say a fifth or so of, of the bottle so I've also got with me though the L'Oreal True Match foundation I decanted the rest of my little glass bottle one into my cushion this is probably what I'll take with me on my little like overnight bag I'm thinking of packing I'll show you guys in another video and then I'm popping in my Mac Studio Fix fluid as well just in case I have to do a gig or something when I get back this is really long wearing and actually stands up on stage performing <laughs> so I needed something quite hardy and then some other base products I actually have six concealers which I will explain <laughs> so one of them is in my purse my MAC studio finish concealer that always sits in my purse um, I'm bringing my Glossier stretch just because I really like this for like an everyday look I'm thinking in quarantine I probably won't want to wear much makeup this is a really nice thing I pull out on like no makeup makeup days my NARS soft matte complete concealer it actually only has a little bit left and I've kind of fallen out of love with this so I'm just using it up a bit for the next few weeks but I will not take that with me on the plane so this I'm enjoying in Melbourne and then just before we go I just won't bother taking that with me because I think yeah like I've I've really pretty much gotten most of it out um, the same goes for my L'Oreal Infallible Concealer. Um, this one has nearly finished. This is in the shade Fawn. I absolutely love the shade. Um, I love this so much, but it, this one is pretty much finished. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll throw that out and I'll just start using my Tarte Shape Tape. Well, I used this the other day. I don't like it as much. <laughs> I like the L'Oreal one so much better. And this is in the shade Fair, and I actually find it a little bit too fair for me because I prefer something just, I don't know, a hint darker these days. So I'm not sure. I'm sort of tempted to actually leave this one behind and just repurchase this, but we'll see. Um, but then, of course, my Flower Beauty Light Illusion. This is definitely coming with me, and I have backups that are already on the boat to New Zealand as well. And then I've got two powders, a setting powder from MAC. This is a mineralized skin finish and light. Again, one I'd probably pop in my little, like, overnight bag. It would be quite good 
um, just to you know put a little bit of face powder on in the morning that we fly nothing too major and then I've got my number seven airbrush away translucent finishing powder which is a really nice glowy kind of powder yeah okay what's next cheek products probably I think I did quite well with cheek products I've got my Chanel cream bronzer I love this bronzer but I won't repurchase it because it is not very inclusive but I am trying to use it up because you know I've still got quite a lot of product in there so I would purchase the Fenty Beauty bronzer over this one I've heard the cream bronzer from them is amazing and then I also have a little cream blush and highlight duo this is the Mecca Cosmetica I think it's called like Sunday skin on oh no, a weekend skin it's in the shade blossom it's such a pretty oh, it's looking a bit rank there's like lots of brush hairs in there <laughs> Ooh, but it's kind of a watermelony sort of color and then I also it does come with a cream highlight on the other side it's a little bit dark for me I don't really use that much but I love this shade and then I have some powder products as well. So I've got my Hourglass Metallic Strobe Lighting Kit. You can actually buy this again, or at least you could. <laughs> it came out as a second release in like the middle of this year. I didn't rebuy really another one because I still have quite a lot of product in this. And it was sort of, you know, 2020 was happening and I was trying to be careful with what I was buying and I just was like, no. But I will check to see if it's still available. Hopefully it is. Um, and then I have one of my Clinique blushes. This is the shade Plum Pop, one of my favorites. It's what I've been wearing on my cheeks a lot lately, if you've been curious. And then my NARS Orgasm blush as well, because this is a really nice sort of more peachy color. And it's so small, so it comes with me almost every time I go on a trip. So for eyeshadow, I have this little Nabla palette, which actually doesn't have any Nabla shadows in it. <laughs> I just really like the palette. Um, it's full of my NARS singles, plus one little random Makeup Geek one from their old collection. It's the Shimmer Shimmer shade. Yeah, this is one of my favorite little things to keep my everyday makeup drawer anyway. Love it, and it's so nice and small. And then I grabbed two cream shadows, my Australis Metallics eyeshadow, which I love. But then also this, and sadly, <laughs> this is my Stella Shimmer and Glow in the shade Kitten. Um, this is completely dry. Oh my wordy word, as I was saying. Um, this uh, this is completely dried up, so I actually can't even use it. So I'm actually literally going to throw it this way. But I had pulled it out to keep. But it is done. So for brow products, I actually had three accidentally. I was only going to bring my Marcel one as well as the Glossier um, Boy Brow. But then I accidentally found one of my Essence Make Me Brows lying on the ground. So clearly he got left behind. So I am going to take him with me though because I like it. So <laughs> randomly have three brow products. I have three mascaras as well, although one of them I'm about to biff. This one here. This is my old L'Oreal Paradise um, brown mascara. It's nearly done its stash. So I'm going to finish this off while I'm in Melbourne and then ditch that tube and then take with me my brand new tube of it because I love this mascara. So I had to repurchase it. Um, so that's just a brand new one. And then I also, for a black mascara, have the Flower Beauty Warrior Princess mascara. I had talked about a while back about wanting to try this and it's okay. I'm not like 100% sold on it. I don't think it's the best mascara I've ever tried. Um, there are other mascaras I prefer over this, but I still think it's a really nice mascara, so I'm happy to use it up. And then I have some eyeliners. I've got two liquid liners by M Cosmetics. This is their brush tip liner, the illustrative liner, brown and black. Might have been a bit excessive to bring all this, but whatever. And then I've got a brown Annabelle choc chip pencil, a black Rimmel eye pencil, as well as the nude Rimmel extreme lasting eye pencil and then I just have a random couple of tools as well so I have brought with me some really old lashes that are hanging around in there these are from Quartz Beauty they're my favorite ones the jade lashes with some glue I know lashes might seem silly but if I get back to New Zealand and we have a gig and our and our box is full of stuff hasn't arrived yet then I need to make sure I've got enough to do like a proper stage face so I have I have my lashes plus some tweezers for actually tweezing and then my lash tweezers um, a shoot a mirror pencil sharpener which is actually the best pencil sharpener I've ever had worth investing then I have lip products which I actually did grab quite a few um, but I wanted to give myself a bit of variety for an everyday lip I pretty much wear NYX suede lip liner in lavender and lace every day you can see how tiny it's gotten over the year um, and I also put in the shade violet smoke as well which is a little bit more mauvey and I actually put in the red one as well this is the shade spicy don't particularly love the shade of it but it is just a it's a pretty basic red it's just a little bit more orange toned than I would like but that is so that if I wear this lipstick from Lisa Aldridge velvet ribbon that I have a liner for it um, which is pretty much only if I'm like performing I would say uh, although I do also have this one from Lancome my favorite rouge flamboyant which is a really nice orangey red perfect for 
man, I keep dropping things. Perfect for springtime, but I honestly would only wear this, as I say, in Christchurch if our boxes were really delayed because we're gonna wear masks a lot, we'll be in isolation, so yeah. But I do have two nudes, MAC Blankety, as usual, one of my favorite nude lip colors, looks really nice on top of the NYX liner, as does this one, Act Natural. This is a bit more matte. I've been wearing this one a lot lately with NYX, with the NYX liner, if you've been wondering. Anytime I've worn a nude lip lately, it's been that. But I do also have my e.l.f. lip pencil in Natural, which is pretty much Blankety. I probably didn't need both, but I just sort of threw them in because of like, they're in my everyday makeup drawer as well as a lip gloss, Marc Jacobs Sugar Sugar. I honestly haven't worn this in so long because I just hardly wear lip color at the moment thanks to mask life, but yeah. So that is everything that I'm taking in this bag. I will only list the products below that I'm actually using on my face today. So if you're curious about other things, apologies. It's just gonna make it less confusing because I probably won't mention what I'm using as we go through the Q&A, get ready with me. As I said, I'm probably gonna just link everything below, maybe even on the screen, we'll see how we go. Um, because I want to just focus on talking to you guys about the questions that you asked me on Instagram. So, where are you moving? <laughs> so we're moving to Christchurch initially, at this stage, at least for a year, but we are sort of playing things by ear. Honestly, it's pretty much the theme of life right now, is to go with the flow, go where the opportunities go. Christchurch initially for hopefully about a year or so, and then we will kind of reassess and figure out what next from there. <laughs> going in with some foundation. This is my number seven one. I'm gonna concentrate doing this because I don't want to spill any on my lovely new blouse that I got from Cezanne. They were doing free shipping to Australia and they don't ship to New Zealand. I'll have to use a shipping forwarding service so I can want to buy from them in New Zealand. So I took advantage of it and finally got that blouse that I was talking about to you guys in like February, I wanna say. For these kind of questions, I sort of paraphrased a lot of them. There were a lot of uh, repeated questions, so I kind of went through and looked for all the themes. And I'm pretty sure that I've written out a list of topics to discuss that kind of cover almost everything that was asked. So hopefully I've answered your questions. But this one was, how are you moving? By boat, plane, uh, is it costly? Things around immigration, so. We are flying to New Zealand. We leave on October the 1st. Um, so that's when our like literal flight leaves at this stage anyway, because we have had two other sets of flights canceled. <laughs> but we're now on Air New Zealand, which seems to be pretty reliable and flying regularly. So we should be fine. Um, we're also in premium economy uh, at this stage, which is like a little bit better than normal economy um, and you've more of a chance of not getting bumped. So we felt that was a worthwhile investment. I keep talking about the boat, don't I? I keep saying like our stuff's on the boat. So we're taking ourselves and a few suitcases with us on the plane, but we also sent over about two weeks ago some of our belongings on a boat. When you move countries and you take furniture or the boxes of things with you, you can get them shipped. It's a much more economical but slower process than sending things by air. Um, so that's why we got them sent off early and I'm pleased we did because I just got notification that they're not going to arrive in New Zealand until the 20th of October which is actually kind of convenient because we don't get out of quarantine till mid-October and then we're not moving into our new place until like around about that date anyway so we'll probably be about a week or two without our stuff before it actually arrives at our house but that's okay. I'm just pleased we got it sent off earlier than like the day before we were leaving or something. It was about 10 to 12 tea chest size boxes and um, that's like in terms of like equivalent of stuff that we sent and that was about $700 Australian. So it's not like a cheap thing, but if we were to send that by ear, uh, it would be so horrifically expensive. But it can get as costly as like multiple thousands of dollars if you're shipping things like furniture and such, which is why we decided not to bother with any of our bigger furniture pieces because they just take up room and a lot of them aren't even like investment forever pieces of furniture anyway. They're just like IKEA and stuff. So we're just selling as much as we can here. And the only stuff we took with us were more like meaningful kind of pieces from our home or some practical things. But a lot of things were like things that I'd want with us there to make it feel like home in our new place. Um, and it's been good so far because we've already sold my desk, my little folding desk that got whipped up really fast on Facebook Marketplace, as well as our bookcases. I've sold them, but the lady's picking them up on the weekend. So we're about to have our bookcases all picked up. Um, and of course I'm doing my online plant sale, which hopefully those of you that wanted to plant and live in my area in Melbourne, follow me on Instagram because that's where I was sort of talking about that. Lots to be sold, but yeah, we're sort of like taking some of our things, the most important things, and then selling what we can and 
that just worked out to be the best kind of compromise between like cost and also just like what matters to us. Immigration, we should touch on that. So me and Alex are New Zealand citizens. We're not Australian citizens, which is really useful in this case because we can get out of the country. Alex is also actually an American citizen, but we're New Zealand citizens with passports. That is why we don't need to like bother with immigration and stuff. I know that immigrating to New Zealand in normal times, I think is relatively easy. Oh, I, I'm not really like filled in enough on that. I think it's one of those things like if you're coming for like a job or yeah, you're bringing something to the country, then it's pretty easy to get processed like a, a visa of some description. So maybe in like five years time, if you're thinking about coming to a great country, New Zealand is amazing, but it'll be a while before anyone who's not a New Zealand citizen is allowed to move there. Unless you absolutely have skills that someone in New Zealand doesn't have. The next question was, what is it like moving in a pandemic? <laughs> well, I've only moved overseas once, um, not in a pandemic, uh, that was here, and that was also quite stressful, but I think at the time we were also very naive because we had never done it before. Um, that time we didn't bring anything by boat, we just brought suitcases because we didn't have a lot with us in New Zealand and we wanted to reset up here. Um, I didn't find that process all that stressful. It was, I mean, it was still stressful, but just not like anxiety inducing. I think I have a lot more anxiety about it this time rather than excitement just because it is a pandemic, we don't know what's going to happen, uh, we have to go with the flow, like we can't plan for when we immediately get to New Zealand because we don't know whether we're quarantining in Auckland or Christchurch, you don't get told until you get off the plane. Um, <laughs> so we can't even make plans for like post quarantine until we're in quarantine. But it's okay, like I just want to get on New Zealand soil to, burn up, to be honest, I'm just going to like kiss the ground. Okay, so the next common question, a question that came up again and again and again and again is like where are you guys living like in terms of home, are you buying, are you renting? What are you looking for in a rental? Like basically what's your living situation? Are you living with family, parents, etc.? We are going back to live in a family home, but we'll be the only ones there. So it's not like we're living with our parents or something, but it is a parental home that is vacant and we've been able to move into that. Um, so that's been really helpful because we know exactly where we're moving into, we know what it looks like. It's like that's been a nice little like easing of anxiety in that way. We haven't had to deal with thinking about like getting a place to rent or anything and we're not in a position to buy at all yet. That's kind of partly the reason we're going back. <laughs> Maybe eventually we'll be able to buy. But the house that we're moving into is so beautiful guys. It's like a three bedroom house with a garden so it's actually gorgeous um, and I'm really excited to show you guys around it. Um, so it's going to be quite a step up from a little apartment. <laughs> We've only lived in like small apartments here in Melbourne for seven years um, and even before that we lived in a pretty small like granny flat kind of situation in Wellington. It did have a wee garden but it was pretty small. It's gonna be so nice to like practice in one room and be like two doors down from Alex uh, where he's practicing and like we won't be as disrupted and it is gonna be I think very nice for our work-life balance. So we had lots of questions regarding hotel quarantine. What does hotel quarantine look like in New Zealand? Do you get a kitchenette? Like how does it work? Um, to be honest, there's not a heck of a lot of information for even people coming in, like it's not like they show you a picture of the room and everything it's going to be like, because it's a bunch of different hotels throughout New Zealand that have been sort of taken over by the government. Taken over, that sounds awful. It's helping to keep some of the hotels alive and operating, because New Zealand's biggest export is tourism. So in some way it's kind of nice the government's like paying these hotels to operate. Um, but instead of holding tourists, it holds returning New Zealanders. So it's law for us to go into managed isolation facilities for two weeks. We can't go quarantine in our own home or anything. We have to be in managed isolation, uh, which is in a hotel. They, it's fully catered, so they'll pay for all your food and deliver your food to your hotel room. So you, I don't think you get like a kitchenette at all. There might be the odd hotel that they've used that might have one, but like you get catered meals. I've heard it's a really mixed bag. It all depends where you end up. Some people end up at the Grand Millennium Hotel in Auckland, which is like five star and it's gorgeous and the food's delicious and some people end up at, and some people end up in really not great places. So I'm quite worried about that. Like I'm kind of like crossing my fingers that we get a nice one. But at the end of the day, um, I just want to get back to New Zealand. I'm not picky. Like by the time I get there, I just, I don't think I'll care. I don't think I'll care by the time I'm there. But thankfully though, we don't have to pay for that. Kiwis only have to pay for it if you are planning to only visit New Zealand, like for less than 90 days. If you're staying, if you're moving to New Zealand, we're staying longer than 90 days, you don't have to pay for your quarantine. Otherwise it's like $3,000, like it's so much money. Um, so we're very thankful that when they brought in charging for it, they decided not to charge everyone. I think they should not charge anyone, personally. I think it's part of New Zealand's 
um, COVID response to have managed quarantine. And I think it's not very fair, like, especially for people that have like split families across the Tasman, like, you know, they're not gonna see their children or anything for a long time. I don't know, it's just kind of heartbreaking. And they could just put a ban on actually going on like holidays. I don't think visiting your family is a holiday. I think it's like a necessary part of your mental health. We're getting a little bit political. I still love New Zealand's COVID response. I will say that, absolutely. Someone was asking about restrictions on the border. So yes, at the moment, New Zealand has very strict border control. Basically only Kiwis can come home or partners of Kiwis. You have to get like an application for that. And then there are some very, very few exemptions for like if, some, if there's a funeral or something, they allowed in members of the family of the mosque shooting trial if you guys remember back to like march last year new zealand had a really bad terrorist attack on two local mosques in christchurch and they just held the trial for it and so they allowed like families members of those that were killed to come in and testify and you know be a part of that process um and it was actually really powerful i'm so pleased that new zealand government did that um and they got about as good a justice as they could the guy's been sentenced to life in prison, no parole. It is the absolute strongest sentence you can get in New Zealand because we don't have death penalty. So I think it was a win in the end, but such a horrific event. And I'm just pleased that many of them feel a bit of closure with it. What are we up to? Done my face. Oh, I'll do a little bit of spray. Hold on one second. I can't talk and do this. Mm. Looking real glowy. I might be a bit silent doing this. What do we? What can we talk about? <laughs> I also might end up going in and out of focus because sometimes when I don't look at the camera, it decides to focus on other things in the background. So, apologies. <laughs> Someone was asking about how far away Australia is from New Zealand. They're like, dumb question. I'm like, no, it's not a dumb question. Like, I should explain these things. So, Australia and New Zealand are. We feel we're really close, but I think in the grand scheme of like the world, like especially if you live in like England, Europe. Um, we're quite far away. It takes about three and a half to four hours to fly between Melbourne and New Zealand. Melbourne's on the east coast of Australia, so we're close, one of the closer cities. So New Zealand is off the east coast. Mm. I love my neighborhood, but I'm not gonna miss those interruptions. <laughs> it's gonna be much quieter, I think, where I live and crash it, which is gonna be good. New Zealand is off the east coast of Australia, but we're very much like quite far away. <laughs> we like to think of ourselves as just hanging out in like the middle of the Pacific. Um, so if you're in America and you travel out into the Pacific, you get to Hawaii and then you keep going and there's some um, other islands like Tonga, Samoa, and then below that is New Zealand. Yeah, three and a half to four hours by plane. There's no other way to get between the countries. So that was one thing that's not like I can just pack up a car and drive, like you have to fly and then you have to send your stuff on the boat or fly it. Um, and that's what makes it costly. Oh yeah, someone was asking about the cost of living between Australia and New Zealand. So this is something that was really like in our decision making. Um, I think the cost of living in Melbourne is relatively comparable to parts of New Zealand, particularly like Wellington and Auckland. The problem is in New Zealand is you just don't earn as much. That's part of the reason what pulled us over the ditch here to Australia is that especially for musicians, you just earn so much more here in normal times. Even if we go back and we have lots of work, lots of gigs, if the amount of work we're doing, we're not gonna be bringing as much money if we're doing that same amount of work here. So I don't suspect we'll be rolling in it. <laughs> but I think it will be nice just to be working in our industry. And we also have the luxury of having other avenues. Like we're not just in one sort of job or line of work. Like I make online content and we've got our Morton Music online business now as well, which got really exciting plans for. Things are really like happening behind the scenes there. Like we had a really great initial launch and then things are probably looking a little quiet but they're simmering. Stuff is happening, which is very cool. So I feel like between those three ventures, our, our professional performance careers, online stuff, and Morton Music, I think we can really make a life for ourselves. So I think it'll be good. In terms of like food and clothing and things like that, everything's a little bit more expensive in New Zealand. Just is further away. So there's a bit much higher tax as well. Our GST is 15% there, whereas it's 10% in Australia. Um, that's like your tax or your VAT. If you're in Europe there are a lot of stores that have like Australian and Kiwi branches and you'll be looking at the tag and it'll be like 30 Australian dollars but then below it's 35 New Zealand dollars so everything's always just like a little bit more expensive in New Zealand but the advantage is that you get to live in New Zealand and it's really safe and beautiful and like 
nice people, you know? Kiwis are some of the nicest people in the world. Oh, and someone was asking about the job Alex is applying for. So he's sending in a tape for the, there's a job going in the NZSO, which is the biggest and sort of most prestigious orchestra in New Zealand, the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra. And it's based in Wellington. So he is applying for that. So that's like sort of thing. If he was to win that job, um, we would probably end up moving up there sometime during 2021. But you know, it's not a given at all. There's going to be a lot of people applying for that job, especially with the like such disruption here in Australia. Um, so fingers crossed from guys. I think he has a really good shot. He's certainly in the running. Yes, people were asking also if we've got gigs lined up. So. We're in the process of lining things up. Um, we may not get a lot for the rest of this year because a lot of orchestras have already rostered their concerts. I suspect what we're going to be is like sick fill-in. So if someone is unwell, even with the smallest sniffle, they have to call in sick because of COVID um, and get tested and such. So we're gonna be on call <laughs> a lot until sort of mid-December when the gigs finish for the year. Uh, yeah, so about a month and a half of sort of being on call ready and waiting if a gig comes up we can jump in and fill in i suspect that's how we're going to be used for the rest of the year and because we've let orchestras know that we're back and we've, we've been put on a lot of casual lists already like we've they've got our details they're ready to use us hopefully we'll get booked a lot for next year so we did realize that we might be going back and not having work for quite a few months but we kind of don't mind new zealand is gorgeous and we want to be able to enjoy our time there go on holidays around the country, see our family. We're, we're gonna both have our 30th birthdays over the summer. Like, it's gonna be a nice time to be in New Zealand over the summer, even if we haven't had much work immediately when we get back. We'll definitely get a lot of work for 2021. Someone was asking, how excited is your family, especially your mum? <laughs> yeah, mum's real excited. When I told her, what did I say? Oh, she was showing me her little dog, Isla, who I'm so excited to go back and cuddle because I haven't seen her since February when she was like a wee puppy and now she's like a proper full-size Jack Russell. Um, and she was showing me her through Zoom and I was like, oh, that's so nice. I'll get to cuddle her in October. And she's like, what? <laughs> That's how I told her. It was very cute. She was very excited. My mum's very good at not like forcing her opinions on her children, I don't think. She's pretty good at just like having them but keeping them to herself. But um, I think she was pretty like, yeah, this seems like a really good idea and very supportive of us to come back. Man, this is running out. I have nearly actually finished. It's taking me five minutes to do my eyebrows. Okay, so the next question, someone was asking about what will you miss in Australia? First and foremost, my friends, definitely. I've got some beautiful, amazing friends here that I'm really devastated to lose in my life, like my day-to-day -day life. Um, and just being able to connect with them in person. I mean, it felt like such a loss this year and hardly seeing them. Um, but I don't know, just being that bit further away just makes it harder to maintain friendships. But hopefully we will be able to. To be honest, a lot of the things I'm going to miss about Australia and Melbourne have sort of been taken away by COVID anyway. So things like the beautiful, rich um, art scene and culture here. I mean, we just can't experience that right now. Um, the coffee culture is lovely, but New Zealand also has beautiful coffee and food and things. But yeah, so it's mainly people that are holding me here, like my friends and such, and of course my plants. I'm going to miss them. Um, but in terms of like specific kind of Melbourne things, and especially in my area, I haven't been able to show you guys like local cafes that I love because it just is a little bit too close to where I live and, you know, privacy and all that. But I think what I'll do is in the last week before we go, I might go around and like take a few photos and then make like a blog post of like recommendations for Melbourne, like things to do and see when you can come back. <laughs> um, and especially in my local area so that if you're in Melbourne um, and once the 5k thing lifts, you can come and check out some of my favorite things to do in this area. So stay tuned for that. Lots of blog posts I suspect will be put up while I'm in quarantine because we've got two weeks in a hotel room. <laughs> So I've got this big to-do list of stuff to do while in quarantine. But the follow-up to what will you miss in Australia is what will you look forward to in New Zealand. Um, I kind of answered that I guess over the whole course of this. Um, friends and family obviously, a music scene that is somewhat around, <laughs> somewhat exists. Being able to travel even if it is just domestically, like New Zealand has the most gorgeous scenery and travel things to do you know like there's actually a lot of places in New Zealand I haven't visited before like Milford Sound even Queenstown I know shoot me I'm a Kiwi that's never been there do you know why because I go to Wanaka instead I've been to Wanaka like six times and I've just never gone over to Queenstown because it's usually so touristy um, but I suspect it's very untouristy right now so I might go to Queenstown 
I definitely like Milford Sound, Abel Tasman, there's lots of places I want to go and visit. And there are of course a few like random little snacks and food things and just some things you can't get here in Australia so I am looking forward to those. Um, I'm sure I will mention things in vlogs as I go along. <laughs> the next one was very sweet. Someone was like, how can we support you? The number one thing you guys can do over the next, you know, two months or so is just tune into my content, hit the notification bell so you can watch, you know, watch things as like close to the upload time as possible, liking videos, commenting on videos, sharing videos. Did you know you can push that little like share button, the little arrow, and you can share it with people. So if there's like specifically someone that might enjoy my video or sharing it to your own socials, that helps a lot. But honestly, engagement more than anything, just tuning in and yeah, liking, commenting, all that jazz, that helps me so much. I guess the other thing as well is just to be patient in case I have like a couple of weeks where maybe I don't have uploads or something. If something happens and we get a little bit stuck, there could be a bit of a weird time. I can't predict what the next few weeks are going to be like. I've got a schedule, but you know, I'm going to have to be a little bit uh, flexy with it. So just be patient. Know that this is a really tough time for everyone. <laughs> Um, but I am in a much more positive space, as you can probably tell than my last video. I've processed a lot of things. I'm now in that stage where I'm like really excited to go. So we've made a good step forward. Oh, what's an Australian store that I will miss? Hmm. I'll tell you what. There's not really a specific Australian store that I will miss. It's more food. My favorite restaurant, Entrecot in South Yarra. That place is amazing and I'm gonna miss that and I'm so sad I haven't been able to go and actually have like a meal there before we leave. They have this cute little thing called Entrecot at home which is where you can have like a steak dinner at home. You can get it delivered through Provador. It's not cheap, it is a fine dining restaurant but it is so nice and my auntie, she lives in Sydney, she was like, I'm gonna get you guys you know, one last entrecote meal. So we're gonna do that like the weekend before we go, which is just so lovely, she's so sweet. So I would say probably some of my favorite foodie places I'm gonna miss. Also, Red Rock honey soy chicken chips. I don't think we can get those in New Zealand and I'm really sad. <laughs> They're the best crisps ever. So I'm eating them like every second day at the moment, just because I wanna get my fill before I leave. Actually, I had to think about it. One store that I do think I'll miss is Chic. I don't believe Chic is in New Zealand. New Zealand has had a lot of stores arrive since we used to live there. Um, things like Mecca Maxima, so we can get like a lot of beauty brands and I'm pretty sure we can order online from Sephora. I'm gonna miss Chic because I don't believe they are in New Zealand and that's like a store that I enjoyed shopping at. But honestly, in person, and I haven't been to a mall since March. I'm looking forward to going to a mall, guys. That's gonna be fun. And we're gonna have to do a little bit of that when we arrive because there'll be a few things we need to pick up. Like we've gotta to go to Kmart. I've already picked out the toaster and kettle I want to get. I'll tell you what we don't have in New Zealand is Ikea. Can you believe? I know. But we've got this thing called The Warehouse which used to be really budget and I was looking on there and they've got some really nice stuff now like flat pack kind of furniture things. So I feel like we'll be okay. Okay, so this next question, it's important to address because I don't think you should be asking it. Am I pregnant and am I gonna have a family in New Zealand? So in my last video, I there was a scene where like I dropped the uh, soup everywhere and Alex was like, it looks like baby poo. And I said like, get used to it. And everyone assumed I was pregnant and I can understand now, like I can see why. Um, I made that comment more as like, oh, you know, we're hopefully gonna have kids in the next sort of five years. I'm not pregnant right now, guys. <laughs> I wouldn't let you know or let it slip like that in a vlog, but it was more like a, you know, get used to it, like nearly 30, like family time is gonna be sometime soon, we hope. But I would really highly suggest not asking someone if they're pregnant or not being like, oh my gosh, are you pregnant? You know, imagine if me and Alex were trying and imagine if we've been trying for years and you don't know and we are feeling heartbroken over that. Like that could be a really triggering thing. I've got friends that have struggled with infertility. Don't ask people if they're pregnant, guys. Even if they're giving off clues, just be like to yourself, okay? But no. I'm not pregnant. I think you'll know if I'm pregnant because I'll probably be throwing up everywhere. Bad morning sickness runs in my family. So also if I take three months off uploads, it's probably why. <laughs> the next question though, will you get a puppy? Oh, I really want one, but at this stage, I'm planning just to give my mum's dog a lot of cuddles. Yeah, it certainly would be easier having a dog in New Zealand with like family nearby and stuff in case we needed to travel for work. Or like if we were to get a puppy in New Zealand, um, and then we decided to move back to Australia, if there was a wait on like us coming back and the dog 
needing to come over. I know there's always sometimes like you have to send your dog separately. Um, the dog could always go and stay with our family for a bit. Like it's not as hard as us having one here and trying to get back to New Zealand, which is why we've never got one. So who knows? I would love one and I would absolutely just be like the best dog mom, I think, but I'm not like getting my hopes set on it sort of thing. Do you think people will say your Kiwi accent has waned since being in Oz? I think in certain words, yes. Uh, that word, for example, yes. I say yes now instead of yes, um, which is how Kiwi say it. We have a really like e eh, kind of e. So I tend to, my e's are much more rounded. Um, I'll say over there as opposed to over there. And sometimes I, I slip and slide between them, but definitely, even that definitely instead of definitely. <laughs> definitely I say my eyes still very Kiwi. So pink, ink. What are some other words? Fish instead of fish. A push pin. So it's a pin or a hair pin. Um, instead of pen, which is the way Australians say it, so like pen, which is how we say like a writing pen, it's a pen, as opposed to a pen, which is how Australians say it, more eh, open. I definitely think Kiwis can tell that I've lived in Australia, but everyone in Australia knows I'm Kiwi, if that makes sense. So yeah, I do think they will say that my New Zealand accent has changed slightly, but I think as soon as I've spent enough time back home, it will get really Kiwi again. <laughs> A lot of people ask me about the difference between Australia and New Zealand, like what things are the same, what things are different. I think I might even do like a whole blog post on that at some point or maybe even a whole video. Um, we'll see. Um, but I think it'd be quite fun to kind of do like, yeah, comparison of things that are like very Kiwi versus very Australian and also to clear up a few misconceptions because the Australians like to steal a lot of Kiwi things that are actually ours. <laughs> what are you nervous about for the move? Definitely my biggest nerves are the boat with our stuff. I do not have a lot of faith in like logistics moving companies. I've read a lot of horror stories online of boxes taking months and months to arrive. Um, so I'm very nervous about that, but I'm trying my best to go with the flow. We've planned it as best we can. We have enough stuff with us to survive okay. Plus, you know, family can lend us things that we need for a while when we get there. Um, but I really want to be reunited with my vacuum. <laughs> I'm actually borrowing my friend's vacuum on Friday, which is about three days from now, just to give our house a vacuum because it's been a couple of weeks and I'm already looking at the ground being like, it's so bad. I normally vacuum at least once a week, if not twice. So it's pretty bad. <laughs> I'm sweeping up the areas that don't have carpet. And then of course we'll give it a good vacuum before we move out too. But oh man, I want to be reunited with my hetty. And then of course our flights as well, my gosh, because we've had two sets of flights that have been uh, cancelled. So really fingers crossed that this one we don't get bumped from, or it doesn't get cancelled, or there isn't another like huge outbreak of COVID in New Zealand before we arrive. Like they're just coming down from another, not a wave at all, it was just a small reintroduction. So they've had a bit of restrictions go in. So I really hope like they go back to kind of level one, or at least don't get more than level two restrictions before we arrive. But like honestly at this point, I'm just having to go with the flow. That's all I can do. Otherwise, I'll just drive myself banned. What is the first thing you will do in New Zealand that you're looking forward to? I think in terms of like the first big thing we'll do besides moving in, um, I'm really looking forward to working. I really hope we get at least one gig this year because performing in an orchestra, will, like a proper orchestra, will be amazing. The only gig I've had since March, we had one gig in July, the very beginning, just before the next lockdown happened. Um, and it was an orchestra, but it was like a smaller recording orchestra. Um, so not quite the same, but still pretty amazing. We were like, oh my gosh, the tuning note. Oh. But I can't wait to be doing like a proper onstage symphony orchestra concert. I think I'll cry in like the first rehearsal, which would be really embarrassing because people think, who is this girl? Will you need a car in Christchurch? Is it walkable? So we are going to be living very close to the city. We're right on the edge of the CBD. Um, that was very Kiwi, CBD, which is awesome because it means that we can just walk to go to like cafes and shops and things in our local area. There's a really beautiful park nearby we can walk and bike. Um, Alex is taking his bike with him and I'm actually getting one from a family member once I get there, which is very cool. But my mum is also planning to lend us her second car for a while, at least until we get underway um, and as long as she doesn't need it basically. While we don't need a car necessarily for where we're based, a lot of our family is slightly out of the city or quite a way out of the city. Like my mum actually lives in Canterbury, which is the region. She's an hour out of Christchurch. So it's gonna be handy for us to have a car to be able to drive out and see her. 
Alex's dad lives 45 minutes north of Christchurch. My siblings live on the edge in suburbs. So not a lot of my family live right in the center. Um, so even though, yeah, we could totally get around on foot or bike, just where we are, like in terms of like living, um, just being able to see our family and also being able to like get in the car and go for a day trip somewhere and see the scenery, like it's just so much easier with a car. So even though we don't love the idea of owning a car, we're not really owning it, we're just borrowing it for a while. <laughs> Um, but we'll see, we might end up having to get our own car as well eventually, but we'll just, again, okay. go with the flow. That is the theme of my year. Someone was asking about switching over legal stuff, so like our IDs and all that. I don't think that'll be too much of a process, although you actually did remind me that I need to look into how to get my license changed, <laughs> so thank you. It was like not on my to-do list. Um, usually though, you can travel around and drive around on a foreign license for up to I think three months or so in the new place. So that's what we did when we came here. We just had our Kiwi licenses before we changed them to Victorian licenses. But we will have to get ourselves um, new Kiwi licenses as well when we get back. Uh, other than that, I don't think there's a lot of stuff we have to change. We just have to set up new like utilities, you know, power. We have to get ourselves new SIM cards, things like that. I tell you what, that's something I'm not looking forward to in New Zealand is the extortionate prices for mobile phone plans. The amount you pay, the amount of gigs that you get of data is horrible. <laughs> but the Wi-Fi in New Zealand is extraordinary. So I'll probably have a very small phone plan with a very small amount of data and then just use Wi-Fi as much as possible and download things before I go out on trips and things because the Wi-Fi is awesome and Australia has terrible Wi-Fi. We have much better mobile phone plans here. So you win some, you lose some. The first Kiwi food that you will get. Ooh, What's the first thing I'm gonna buy? Probably, it's not iconically Kiwi, but it's something we can't get here, that you can get there. Sweet Thai chili Doritos. In the purple packet. They are my favorite chip from New Zealand. And I'd have them with a nice big bowl of Kiwi onion dip, which is the supreme chip dip of the world. But that was basically it from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really loved the chill nature of it. Just being able to talk to you guys, update you on all the things that you wanted to know. Also sort of showing you, you know, some of the things that are in my makeup bag for the next six weeks or so. If you enjoyed it also, then don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you want to keep up to date with my move. Make sure you've got that notification bell turned on as well. And until my next video, I hope you guys have a wonderful few days and we'll talk soon. Bye.